guys. Uh, welcome to uh, the Long Island Lobby Coalition uh, press conference. This is our sixth annual uh, Long Island Lobby Day. Uh, we've got 40 organizations here. Uh, we have 75 supporters uh, throughout Long Island that are here with a multi-layered agenda. We're going to hear about it in a minute. Uh, so we have passed six bills over the past uh, five years uh, and a whole slew of budgetary and regulatory initiatives. Collaboration works on Long Island. And we're glad to be part of it. We're glad to be here with uh, some of the We have meetings today with uh, 14 assembly people, uh, seven senators, and an assortment of staff from the government. Uh, we've got six issue areas that we're tackling. Our first one is small business and jobs and economic development. So we'd like to hear from uh, our small business folks. They can come here. And uh, Dr. Nathalia Rogers and Julia Marchesella from the Nassau Council of Chambers uh, can please join us in front. Talk about the major legislative initiative. Um, so one of our major legislative initiatives is introducing a tax deferred small business accounts that would allow small businesses to put away a percentage of their profits and then when the economy begins to soften, the government would allow them to withdraw a percentage uh, of the account tax free. We think it will make for a great economic stimulus uh, for small businesses. Small businesses are the lifeline of our nation. And it's very important that we continue to support the economic Julie. And the National Council is here today to support this type of uh, IRA reform so that small business owners in Main Street America have a say in how they can borrow money and how they can use their own funds on a tax deferred basis. We need sewer infrastructure upgraded and some expansion. We need the Bay Park Sewage Treatment Facility to have an ocean outfall pipe with denitrification. We need sewer uh, capacity increase in the village of Hempstead. And we also need new infrastructure in the Forge River area, which is the Mastic Shirley area. New infrastructure and, and the improvement of existing infrastructure allows us to grow, allows us to be healthy, and also protects the public health and our quality of life. Addressing the issues of sewers is, is essential for economic growth in both Suffolk and Nassau counties. Slightly different in each county. We, in Suffolk, we need it because there are areas where we need to grow that don't have sewers. In Nassau, it's really a quality of life issue and a job producer issue. So it's essential for uh, the environment for people back to work. It's a, per it's a perfect marriage of. of uh, Diverse interests coming together for the betterment of Long Island and for the future of Long Island, for jobs and our environment, for our children and our grandchildren. We cannot grow as an island without good sewers, without the infrastructure that we need here. And we, all of us here together, representing the best interests of Long Island for the future. Uh, John Siebert from Mastic Beach and Friends of Long Island. Uh, while we do appreciate the New York Rising program releasing funds for the homeowners as fast as possible, we do understand the process takes time and to write and administer. However, residents are still struggling in the recovery process and would like to see funds flowing faster to them. A better flow of communication from the state when, with program updates for the residents is necessary so that they can build, build their homes and their lives quicker. I'm Kim Skillen from West Babylon, representing Friends of Long Island. And first and foremost, our agenda today is to ensure that our state officials keep post-Sandy items on, on their top priority list. In particular, we represent 24 grassroots organizations that have sprung up post-Sandy on Long Island. And these grassroots organizations have gotten to know our communities very well and have been working on relief, recovery, and rebuilding. And we're asking our state legislators today to continue to support us and fund us as we continue to rebuild and make our community more resilient and help in funding us to make sure that we're prepared for future disasters. My name is Rich Cantwell with Friends of Freeport. Friends of Freeport, since the beginning of the storm, has helped rebuild approximately 130 homes within, within the village of Freeport. We've done this with fundraising our own. We can do so much more with funding from the state. <clears throat> together, we help put our communities back together. Once our communities are back together, our state is just that much stronger. We need your help. I'm Ron Beninati with Neighbors Supporting Neighbors in Babylon and Friends of Long Island. And um, a hurricane is a one-time event, but like an earthquake, there are aftershocks, secondary disasters. And one of those disasters for many people has been the National Flood Insurance Program. 
this is a program um, on many levels that did deliver for many, many people. But depending on where you were located, the type of damage, you had a secondary disaster that put you through pain that was beyond belief. We need a consumer advocacy organization, or at least clear language insurance policies that inform people what they can expect in the event of a disaster so they're not left handed. Uh, one of the key ingredients to a healthy, safe Long Island is energy resources. And one of the things that has been woefully neglected is offshore wind. One of the things that the Long Island Lobby Coalition agrees upon is where's our wind? In Europe right now, they generate 6,600 megawatts of energy strictly from offshore wind. In America, it's zero. We think we could do better than that. What has Europe learned that we have yet to discover? So right now in Long Island, there are two viable um, proposals. One is off of Montauk, Montauk that could generate between 200 and 800 megawatts of clean, safe, domestically produced wind energy, 30 miles offshore. We need for our state legislators and the governor to get behind these proposals and bring them uh, to Long Island. We think that Long Island is ideally situated to create an industry around offshore wind. This could produce hundreds of jobs, could give us a, a port that can bring facilities out, whether it's off Montauk or whether it's off Long Beach or anywhere else, and give us the diversity of energy that we need. We need a healthy mixture um, because we need more renewables, but we also need economic growth. I think this is the right way to go. I'm here with the Long Island Minority AIDS, representing the Long Island Minority AIDS Coalition, and I want to talk about something very dear to parents' hearts, and that's harm reduction. It is to address the heroin crisis that's on Long Island and the number of young people who are dying from this uh, crisis. We here at the Long Island Minority AIDS Coalition would like to ask the, the state legislature to appropriate more money to the New York State Department of Health to do some intervention prevention work with individuals out on Long Island to overcome the heroin crisis that we have out there and also to put the prevention dollars help save lives. So we're here for the parents who cannot speak for their loved ones who they have lost to plead upon the legislature to appropriate more money. Secondly, we want to make sure that the pharmaceutical drugs that are being dumped into our of water aquifers are no longer dumped and then we do what is called drug reclamation programs where we collect those uh, opiate drugs and other drugs and to the dispense of it correctly. Ernie Mitaje from uh, NICOSH, New York Committee on Occupational Safety and Health. We're talking about safe patient handling. It's very important to understand how many individuals are hurt uh, on a daily basis more than in construction or warehousing. All right, it's important to protect them and protect the patients as well. All right, and we're asking for this legislation to be passed so that both sides can be protected. Our priorities in those areas are making sure that we have money for our buses in Nassau and Suffolk County. Uh, also making sure that we have seven of the top ten uh, most dangerous roadways in uh, the region. So what we need is pedestrian and bike safety programs and uh, upgraded projects. So we need some money moved from the Department of Transportation into those uh, project areas. We also need a transit infra infrastructure fund. Uh, so those are some of the many transportation priorities that are important and critical uh, for Long Island, and we'll talk about those. Um, but before we close this press conference, we do have an assemblyman who's been with us at every lobby day uh, since the very beginning. Thank you, uh, actually my assemblyman uh, in Northport. Uh, so if you care to share a couple words uh, with us. Thank you. When I'm not being a human easel, uh, I, I represent the fine folks of the 12th Assembly District. But really, uh, as legislators, we represent all of Long Island because Long Island is a region onto its own. Maybe part of New York State, but we have uh, very unique issues that only pertain to Long Island, and it is essential. And I'd like to thank the 40 groups that came up today. Uh, it's not often that you see these groups agreeing on, on, on certain things, but because Long Island is a very special place, we all know we have to work together for the benefit of all of us. And it's by coming up here and, and being part of the Democrat process, democratic process, um, it's, it's imperative to get your, your message out there. And I can tell you, all of the issues discussed uh, are pretty much supported by everybody on, on Long Island, all the legislative uh, representatives, because we know we either float together or sink together as an island. <laughs>
So thank you for coming up, and uh, I hope you have a very successful lobby day today. Thank you very much, Seth.